Today we are going to discuss the implementation of the multiplexer by using CMOS transistors. Contents that we are going to discuss are the transmission gate, then 2 as to 1 multiplexer, implementation of 2 as to 1 multiplexer by gate level and by transmission gate. And then we'll discuss 4 as to 1 multiplex. So now we have seen the signal strength. Generally, when we apply the gate high, NMOS becomes on. And when we apply gate low, PMOS becomes on. And NMOS is passing the strong zero level, but degraded one level. And PMOS passes strong one, but degraded zero. Generally, we are going to use the NMOS networks for, for down network, that is a pull down network, and PMOS transistors for pull up networks. So these are the basic things we are going to use while implementing the circuits by using CMOS. So now let us discuss first the transmission gates. What is the transmission gates? It transmits whatever the level or the signal is there. That means just acts as a switch. How it is formed? It is nothing but the parallel connection of the PMOS and NMOS. The two MOS, that is the PMOS and NMOS are connected in parallel and it gives the transmission gate. So already we have seen that pass transistor produces the weak outputs. That means the NMOS produces only the strong zero and PMOS produces the strong one. But our other levels are weak by the NMOS and PMOS. Means PMOS gives degraded zero and NMOS gives degraded one. So here the transmission gates passes both the level as a strong zero and one. So now this is a symbolic diagram of the transmission gate here. The NMOS is there and the PMOS is there. Both are connected in parallel combination and the controlling signal is given. So you can see the controlling signal for the NMOS, the reverse case is present for the controlling signal of the PMOS. Now we'll see the working of this transmission gate here. When we apply gate as a zero, G as a zero, and because of that, GB becomes one. So since the controlling signal for the NMOS is zero, it becomes off. Again, the PMOS becomes off, means the switch acts as an open switch. But when we reverse the condition, when we apply the gate equals to one, GB becomes zero, and both the transistors are conducting here, and because of that, the switch becomes close switch. Then we will see how it is passing the strong zero and one level. So now we have considered the case G equals to one, both the transistors are conducting. Means whenever we are applying the logic zero at input, it passes strong zero. Why? Because uh, NMOS is present or conducting here and that passes the strong zero level. And when we apply the input as one, we are getting the strong one at the output. Why this is so? Because PMOS is again conducting in this case or the condition, and we know that PMOS passes strong one. So in both the cases, means when we apply input as zero and when we apply input as one, both the outputs, we are getting strong zero and strong one because both the transistors are conducting in this case. And again, we can see that the, both the transistors are connected in parallel and whenever we are going to see the effective resistance when we connect in parallel the effective resistance decreases means it decreases the voltage drop across the transistor and this is property is used here and since uh, because of this property property the transmission gates provide strong zero and one levels at the output. So next we'll see the multiplexers in that we are going to consider two as to one multiplexer. So what is a two as to one multiplexer? Means it chooses between the two inputs. The two inputs are there and one input, one output is there. And depending on which select line is going to use, that is selecting one of the input from the input side. So now this is the Boolean expression used for implementing the multiplexer D0, S bar and D1S. So here is the diagram shown here. One select line is there and two inputs are applied. When select line is zero, your output is carrying the D0. When select line is one, your output is going connected to the input D1. This is shown in the tableau format. So when the select line is zero, 
output is equals to z d zero. That is zero and one. When select line equals to one, output is equals to d one. That is zero and one. Now we'll see the implementation of the marks by using a CMOS. First, we are going to see the gate level implementation. You know the Boolean expression S D one S bar D zero. To implement this equation, we are going to use the gates here to implement the first thing S into D one. So select line S and the D one. Both the inputs are applied to the AND gate. Second S bar D zero is implemented by the second AND gate. The S is inverted here, so we are getting the S bar. So both the things are Or here by using or gate here, and finally we are getting the equation S D one plus S bar D zero. Now how to implement this gate by using the CMOS? So for implementing the AND gate, we have to connect NAND in series with the inverter. Here the NAND is connected in series with inverter, and to implement the OR gate, we will connect NOR and inverter in series. Now you know that. For implementing the NAND OR and NOR by using CMOS, we require four transistors, means two PMOS and the two NMOS. And to implement the inverter, we require only two transistors, one PMOS and one NMOS. So here, to implement a NAND gate, four transistors, inverter requires two transistors. So how many transistors are required to implement whole of the circuitry of the two as one MOS? So the total count becomes twenty. So as we are going to compare, or we are going to consider the space utilization of the circuit when you implement by the gate level, the space required is more because the twenty count of the transistor is required to implement the circuit by the gate level. So is there any remedy to reduce the number of transistors or to reduce the count of transistors used, minimizing the space requirement? So we are going to discuss next. So now here the example MUX is implemented by the transmission gate and it is reducing the number of count of the transistor required to implement the MUX. So you ha we have already seen the transmission gate is the combination of the PMOS and NMOS. Here is the diagram shown. So we have the Boolean expression here: D0 S bar D1 S. So D0 and S bar. Generally, we are going to consider multiply the factors or and the factors input and the controlling signal of N MOSFET. So D zero S bar is implemented by the upper transmission gate and D one S is implemented by the lower transmission gate. So output we are getting D zero S bar plus D one S. So single transmission gate requires how many transistors? Only two transistors, one P MOS and one N MOS. So here, how many transmission gates are required? Two transmission gates. So the number of count or the number of transistor count is how much? It is only four transistors. When we are consider the previous case by the gate level implementation, the total transistor required, the total transistor count was twenty one twenty, and this by using the transmission gate implementation of the two as to one marks requires only the four transistors. It shows that the transmission gate. Gives the minimum space utilization to implement the two as to one marks. Now we'll consider the four as to one multiplexer. Four as to one multiplexer has four inputs and the two select lines. Depending on which select line we are going to apply, the one of the input is selected and comes as the output. So to implement the four as to one marks, we require three two as to one marks. So we will consider the gate level. Implementation transistor requirement and the transmission gate implementation transistor requirement. To implement a single two S to one MUX by the gate level, we require twenty transistor. So to implement the four S to one MUX, we require sixty transistors because three two S to one MUX is there. And again, by transmission gate, one transmit one two S to one MUX transmission gate implement requires four transistors. So the total count for the four S to one MUX. By using the transmission gate equals to twelve only. So as compared to the sixty transistor count by gate level, we require only twelve transistors when we implement four as to one MUX by using the transmission gate. And the transmission gate gives the minimum space utilization or the requirement as compared to the four as to one MUX implementation by gate level. 
now while concluding the things let us discuss that the transmission gate transmitting the signal both zero and logic one as a strong because of both the transistors are conducting in a single condition so n carries good zero and p carries good one and because of that our, the output we are getting the both the logic levels are the strong and again the transmission gates the p mos and mos connected in parallel so the effective resistance becomes less and that gives the less voltage drop so this is one of the reason that we are getting the strong output at the output Then we have seen the gate level MUX and the transmission gate MUX implementation. The transmission gate MUX implementation reduces the count of transistors used, giving the less amount of the space utilization here. So the transmission gate gives the less area as compared to the gate level MUX implementation. Thank you very much.